Hello, everyone. Uh, for maybe the last 10 days, I keep telling you that the sun is going to reach Juno. Juno is the archetype of the first lady. She is Jupiter's wife. Uh, her uh, Greek counterpart is Hera, who is Zeus's wife. And uh, between Juno and Jupiter, there's a, a sacred contract that is un unmovable and unbrokeable. Is there any word like this? Hopefully, yes. So it can't, can't be broken. And uh, it represents a, a very strong power between the feminine and the masculine. But if you look at uh, Juno's or Hera's um, myth mythology, she is not a very happy person. Although she is the queen of heavens, she is the mother of gods, uh, and she is the first lady. Everyone is looking up to her and everyone is envying her. At the same time, on a personal level, she's deeply unhappy. Why? Because she's constantly being cheated. So, um, you know, it's uh, she 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 needs to live with a husband who is cheating on her. So it's not it's not a uh, she is not a happy uh, archetype. But at the same time, in comic astrology, Juno represents uh, the the um, uh, committed, serious relationships that we wish to enter that we are able to show the the outside world uh so it's 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 really a sacred contract energy and uh, in mundane charts it represents uh, all sorts of commitments and contracts so um let's take a look because in uh, on uh, uh, the 18th of um, uh, june the gemini new moon is going to be on juno and if you look at Gemini, if you look at the energy pattern of Gemini, it's not really what you would consider as a solid, strict, um, uh, serious um, energy. And of course, uh, Juno here represents the committed, serious, solid um, relationship shit so so it's quite funny how how this is going to work out but i think new new contracts and new um ally, allies are going to uh, emerge here uh, with this this particular gemini new moon so let's take a look at the london chart so the new moon is at 5 36 a.m uh, london time and as you can see on the IC, you have Trans Pluto, Dimension Jump, and Channeling. On the Midheaven, you have Saturn, difficulties, hardships, obstacles around the future or around any future goals. And uh, there is a tightening Mars, Black Moon Lilith, Pallas Athena conjunction. Um, Mars is going to reach first Black Moon. And then Pallas Athena, because Mars is uh, the fastest of the three. And here, Pallas Athena, of course, is the wise girl. Uh, she is the uh, goddess of wisdom, the protector of Athens. Uh, she is a single woman who is not committed to any uh, relationships. And Black Moon Lilith represents the, re represents the returning goddess, who is the create? Who is an archetype? Who is a, uh, who is a an avatar of the creator goddess? Who first leaves the Garden of Eden because she doesn't want to stay there because she uh, feels that it is humiliating, and then she returns there when she has the, a task to do. I have some Lilith uh, videos if you are interested in the myths and also in, uh, how we interpret them in, in uh, karmic charts. And then Mars, of course, is reaching these two strong women quite soon in the, in the, uh, the sign of power. And there is also an interesting uh, midpoint structure. Uh, I could not leave out Sevna, although it's not part of the midpoint structure. If you take a good look uh, Astrea, the karma breaker, is at the midpoint of Vesta and Uranus. Uranus represents freedom, but also chaotic uh, things. And at the moment, you what you see in the world is a programmed chaos. They do this on purpose. They want to escalate this war. This war uh, that is happening in the Ukraine is no longer a Ukrainian-Russian uh, war. It is a NATO-Russian war, unfortunately. So the West is deeply in it. And it's a, it's a power struggle between the West and the East. And uh, if you only read and watch 
uh, Western newspapers, magazines, and and uh, news um, outlets, you would think that the whole world is standing by Ukrainians. It is not. The whole world, about uh, 45, may, maybe 25 percent, is standing by them. But the rest of the world uh, is not. And there's an interesting uh, saying, the rest and the, the West and the rest. And this is exactly what's happening. The West is so uh, sure of it, their power that they think that they can conquer everyone. And the rest is just fighting back very, very silently. And you don't actually, you don't actually see this but you can feel it and you can actually look at it uh, from a different viewpoint if you are willing to to do that let's take a look about, uh, at what's happening in the united states as i'm recording this um trump has been uh incarcerated not incarcerated how is it uh indicted something like that that's the word maybe so he's not technically in prison he is simply um he he, he, is, he is indicted and uh it's the whole thing is really truly ridiculous. But if you if you only watch CNN, you think it's it's just and right. What you don't see, what you fail to see, is the fact that uh, at the same uh, very very same time moment in time, uh, it turns out that there is a whistleblower, a Ukrainian person who worked for Burisma, who has seventeen tapes, seventeen tapes uh, that uh, prove that that there was bribery. Uh, between uh, Burisma and uh, your president, Biden, and his son. And this is, again, just a smokescreen to, to, to show something as, but at the same time, this is a whole kettle of worms uh, that the uh, Democratic uh, Party is trying to pull off because this ne never happened in history. And it's, it's such a power, an abuse of power that I, I'm just looking at it because because it could mean two things. Number one, that they are so sure that they can get away with this, that they don't care. Number two, that they uh, don't care at all uh, because they are so desperate. We will see what, uh, what, what the truth is, uh, if the truth comes out ever. So here with the Vesta Uranus, uh, um, with Austria at the Vesta Uranus midpoint, you can actually focus on changes, focus and understand this program chaos around us and to make the necessary um, karmic changes. You may, a karma breaker, a destiny changer, that's what Austria is. And of course, uh, there is still the, the, the um, Grand Trine, which is now dissociate, because Pluto is back in Capricorn. Uh, Ceres is still in, in Virgo, and Sedna moved already into Gemini. But I spoke to, about this uh, last time, so I'm not going to repeat myself again. If you are still interested, you can actually go there and watch it. Okay, we do have a dissolved mutable T-square uh, at 27, 29 degrees of the signs. And the smoke screen I was talking about is right here because Neptune is squaring uh, the new moon Juno conjunction and opposite uh, Ceres. Interesting enough, in, in the Hungarian chart, you have Ceres at uh, the IC and, uh, and Neptune on the midheaven. So it's even more prominent there. And in this chart, of course, uh, it's still in the uh, tens of fourth houses. Uh, Neptune represents... Uh, uh, universal love, uh, um, you, it represents all kinds of uh, esoteric knowledge, uh, all kinds of mystical experiences, but also smokescreen, pink fog, and deception. And you might ask why, how can one planet represent universal love and deception at the same time? Well, because it is a planet that we can't see by the naked eye, so it's a transcendental uh, planet. And if we drag it down to the third dimension, it will work like this. Uh, we should actually go up there and utilize its power uh, by, by trying to, to, to elevate ourselves to its level. But it's not very easy. And at the same time, Ceres is the nurturing principle and also your home, your base, your nation, your roots, uh, your family. And now they are opposed Yes, because they are trying to destroy all this. 
uh, and the sun moon conjunction and Juno um, creating a T square. So it's really a moment in time that there's a lot of tension, but since the luminaries are actually at the apex of this T-square, it, it, they could highlight and illuminate the deception that is going on. And there is a saving grace in the form of Vesta in Taurus, because it makes a trine with Ceres, so you can actually focus on your family, your home, your roots, your traditions. And it also makes a semi-sextile uh, to the Sun, Moon, Juno. Let's take a look at the transcendental objects. On Sun, Moon, Juno, you have Atlantis, indicating that, yes, once already we had this. We already lived through total destruction. That is now out of the, uh, the powers that we are trying to, to push us towards. And we didn't really like it. We should go back in our memory and try to uncover everything that we know about Atlantis and try to survive what's uh, what they are trying to, to give us. And there's Aten, the sun disk, the Egyptian sun disk, and Imhotep, who was a polymath in uh, uh, Egyptian uh, history, and Attila, uh, who was a, a Hungarian, a Hun, uh, uh, who is has a very, very bad press, but actually, some of the, um, uh, for instance, if you read um, the um, accounts by Priscus Rator, he 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 actually loved Attila. So it, it it's funny funny how they can actually destroy a character by by bad mouthing. That's that's Attila, and also the uh, the, the the general, the uh, victorious general on Neptune. You have Pan Pandora and Pythagoras. Pythagoras, of course, is the math mathematician who is also uh, um, created a mystical system of numerology. And Pandora, who is the first woman, and her jar, which is really not a jar, it's like a putos. It's a huge uh, thing that contains a lot of stuff. Uh, that's where Prometheus uh, put all the miseries of mankind, but Pandora opens it. And of course, one thing, uh, by, by the time she shuts it, one thing remains inside, which is hope. And when I heard this myth for the first time, I was quite young, I, I didn't really understand why. Why was hope also put among the mi miseries of mankind? And la later on, later, much, much later on, when I... Uh, when I had to live through a number of uh, catastrophes and personal trage tragedies, uh, and I experienced the the ups and downs of hope. When you are hoping for a good uh, outcome, when you are hoping for a uh, lucky break, and it's not happening, it's even worse than without hope. So yes, hope uh, has its its uh, place there for sure. On Ceres, you have Osiris the uh, lord of the underworld in Egyptian mythology, and Demeter, which is actually Ceres. So uh, quite interestingly, Demeter is the Greek version and Ceres is the Roman version of the same uh, goddess of agriculture and cultivation. And on Vesta, you have Darius, huge money, a hell, uh, the uh, uh, underworld, the, the lady of the underworld in Norse mythology, Cerberus, who is the guardian of the underworld. Uh, so uh, what you need to do is to focus, Vesta, on big money, what is happening to big money, and what kind of hell they are trying to uh, uh, put us through. And then there's two... two um, uh, TNOs, actually one can centaur and one TNO. Pelion, which is the, the mountain where the uh, uh, centaurs live, where they, their caves are. And Pelion represents the, the, the mountain of life that you need to conquer, that you need to get on top. And Morsomnus was very prominent during the pandemic. Uh, Morsomnus is the, the two brothers, uh, Dream and Death, uh, or Sleep and Death. And uh, at the moment, that's exactly what's happening again in the world. Uh, they are trying to put us through a smoke screen and trying to really do away with us. Anyhow, uh, and there are no uh, fixed stars in this chart. Quite interesting. In the Hungarian, the Budapest chart, on the ascendant, there was Vasa, uh, uh, Vasa, but here you don't have any stars that are prominent. Okay. There is also a, a planetary picture with the Liliths. 
And uh, all three lilies are prominent at the moment. Uh, there's the asteroid lily, uh, which is um, which is uh, the revolt against injustice, and opposite a lily is um, a dark moon lily. It's a little bit wide for my taste. That is why I didn't put in the um, the line here. But of course, you could if you uh, if you allowed. Uh, but with the uh, with complex planetary pictures, I only allow two degrees. But it's still there. The energy is still there. The uh, dark moon Lilith represents the acceptance of the curse. It's not the curse itself. It is a behavior pattern where you do what you need to do or you want to do, and you don't care even if you are going to be cursed for it. So that's that's what it is. And uh, you do have a little, and we do have a little engine with Uranus, Pallas Athena, and dark moon. And uh, I did include Mars and uh, and Black Moon here, because uh, although they are not part of the planetary picture, they are part of the conjunction. And also Mars is going to apply. Uh, so it's it's going to reach Pallas Athena in, in, in a week or so, or maybe two weeks. And there's a trapeze as well. Uh, if you take a good look, here's it, here it is. With, uh, the base is a quincunx, uh, Chiron, and uh, uh, asteroid Lilith, reboot against injustice versus uh, our karmic wounds, and the two sides. This is, is are the um, are two um, sextile uh, semi sextiles. I told you that there are many many uh, forms of trapeze, really many forms, and this is one, and it has an inner energy of trines. So the inside is quite nice and flowing, but the top is a square. So you you will have a lot of power struggles, and you will have you will have to show the world because the top of the uh, the trapeze is always the stage where you actually step, and then uh, so it's the pulpit, it's the uh, it's the stage where you can tell what you think. And there's a fixed square which makes it quite difficult. Mars Uranus is about how you can't exercise your free will. Uh, Mars uh, uh Lilith is about how you can fight for what's you and Pallas Athena's wisdom and that though, all those are kind of squaring Uranus and actually these are applying uh, to an exact square but there's a tiny angel wing as well with Uranus uh dark moon and Chiron at its apex uh, so there is some hope transcendental objects Again, we don't have any fixed stars. It's quite quite spectacular that we don't have. It's it's interesting. Anyhow, here are the transcendental objects with Mars, uh, uh, Black Moon. You have Hypnos, Virtus, Plotinus, and vir Virtue, virt Virtus, which, which is Virtues. Hypnos is sleep, so we are being put to sleep, kind of. Virtus and Plotinus are two philosophers. Virtus was also a Roman senator, and he was a philosopher, and, and Plotinus lived in the third century BC, and he um, he was the former of Neoplatonism. We need philosophy in this situation. But, and when Pallas Athena, which is a little bit farther away, has Hebe, who is the, the, the goddess of youth, and yes, we should really pay attention to our young people, because they are being killed uh, left and right. On Dark Moon, you have Asculapia. Uh, these were the case of Asclepius where you were actually being healed. And Teharan Hiawako, who is a South American Indian uh, archetype, he was the big white man who taught the Indians how to, uh, how to do agriculture, how to cultivate uh, plants, which is very, very hard work over there. And um, so he, he represented some sort of new order where you actually had to break your back, but it, it gave you some security. And he had a brother, Shavishkara, according to the myth, who didn't want to do the, the, this hard work and simply kept on uh, hunting and gathering. And then the two brothers are entering in a fight and Taran Hiyavaku kills his brother. So the new order kills the old way of life. This is the, the message of the myth. And this is what uh, karmic wounds are linked to this. And that's actually happening. And on Chiron, you have Panacea, the universal healer, and Lachesis, who is the uh, middle of the fates. She's the one who keeps the um, 
the threads of your life by which you put together the whole fabric of your life. And she's the one who measures them. So she is the, uh, and also she's appointing the diamond to you who is going to, uh, who is going to be like, like your, your guardian angel, uh, something that we call uh, the signature in karmic astrology. And on uh, Uranus, you have two strong women, Hatshepsut, who, who was the uh, for, uh, the only documented uh, uh, Egyptian uh, v- uh, female pharaoh, Arachne, who is a who is a mortal girl, but she uh, is capable of uh, creating beautiful tapestries, and Sibylla or Kubela, who was the um, the creator goddess or the great mother of of Asia Minor. Uh, three very strong women are maybe the vehicles of this kind of change or could help us to come over this uh, total uh, struggle. And this is something that I wanted to show you how the out of bounds moon would look like if we could see it. Of course, we we can't because whenever the sun is up, we can't see anything. So any new moon can't be watched by the naked eye. I'm just going to show you that here in the chart, you have the sun, the moon and Juno within one degree of each other. So this is a conjunction, a triple conjunction. But in the sky, uh, if you add di- uh, another dimension, which is the declinations, here is the um, here is the um, celestial equator. Here's the ecliptic. The sun is always on the ecliptic because that is what creates the ecliptic. And it's at the moment at 23 degrees, 24. We are just three days before the... Uh, um, b- before the um, solstice the summer solstice so it's actually coming up to this this solstice line and juno is at 14 degrees 49 right here and as you can see the moon is at 27 degrees 31 quite out of bounds and what does out of bounds mean in karmic astrology when you have an out of bounds moon or any out of bounds planet it usually goes up there comes out of the normal territory uh, as a result of extreme pain. So in this particular new moon, extreme pain is also embedded. And uh, it's not very nice, but at the same time, the Juno there helps us to create new covenants, new align- uh, alignments, new uh, contracts. And this is what we need to do. Uh, I wish you happy new moon. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.